In this video, we'll learn how to read an Excel file using the Apache POI library. It's an open source library that you can use to read and write Excel files in Java. So first of all, uh, let's have a look at the Java file that we will be reading in this video. It's a file that contains the uh, population of all the countries in the world. Uh, several columns with different uh, types of data uh, are in there. We have a calculated column at the end that uh, calculates the percentage of people from the world live in that specific country. And uh, we also have at the end of this file some empty uh, cells as well. In our project, in our Java project, we have to uh, use specific dependencies or specific libraries uh, for Apache POI. So let's have a quick look at the five libraries that we will be using. In our POM file, we specify the dependencies for all of these libraries. The first of all is the main uh, POI library from uh, Apache. The second one are the POI OOXML schemas, uh, the POI OOXML package, the OOXML schemas package, and the POI scratchpad. Not all of these are relevant for just reading the files, but uh, there will be other lectures where we use more advanced features of the Apache POI and they'll become very uh, important then. Now, let's have a look at how we can read a Excel file. So first of all, we specify the folder where we will read our files from, and then uh, we, we create an input stream reading that specific file from that specific folder. So we read an input stream that contains the folder name and uh, concatenate the file name to that. So that input stream can be passed on to a workbook factory object that will create an Excel workbook that we can then use to read this Excel file. So the workbook factory creates a workbook based on input stream and then uh, that workbook represents the Excel file in that Excel file, there are several collections. Um, the workbook can be used as a collection of sheets. So if we looked at our Excel file, there were two sheets in that file. Um, one was the uh, sheet one, and the second one was chart one, which contains a chart. We won't worry about the chart uh, in this video, but uh, just be aware that you have to specify which sheet you'll be reading uh, when you read an Excel file. So then we loop through the different sheets in the workbook and we print the name of the sheet. The sheet object has several other get methods that will give you all kinds of information about the sheet um, and also several set methods that you can use to change uh, the sheet. That will be part of another lecture. So if you look at uh, different um, get methods that we have here, um, we can get the footer, get the header, um, get the first row number, etc. So several things that we can uh, get from that sheet object. In this case, uh, we'll just print the name. Now, we're going to read in this video the content of the first sheet. Sheets are zero indexed, so we can say workbook get sheet at index zero. That gives us the first sheet in the workbook. Then we can loop through all the, row, the rows of this sheet. And inside a row, we have a collection of cells or columns, and we can use a for loop on the cells in a specific row. So we do a for loop on all the rows in the sheet, and then we do a for loop on all the cells in the row. Now, it's important to understand that if you use a for loop in this way, we only get the cells that actually have content. Because in the resulting XML file, that's actually your, that represents your Excel file. The cells that don't have a value are not there. So if we loop through the collection of cells, we will not pass through cells that have no value. So sometimes that can be important that you also have those, so you can check if they're empty. And for that, we use a different type of for loop. We use a for loop that just uses the indexes of the rows and the indexes of the cells. So here we're gonna do a for loop across the rows. We ask the sheet, what's the first row and what's the last row, and we pass every row in between those numbers. Then we pass the row with that index to a new row object, and inside that row object, we do the same thing. We do a for loop from the first cell to the last cell, and we pass that to a cell object. In some cases, 
this row get cell will be null, will be a null value because if we look at, for example, this cell here, it has no value. So if we get the cell from the workbook, we'll get a null value. But at least that will tell us that this cell is empty. So what we do here, we check if the cell returns a null value, then we consider that cell to be empty. And we just output empty in this case. If it's not null, then it has a value. We can get the value from the cell very easily. Now, we, what we could do is say cell and then if we know what type of value to expect, we can say get the date cell value or get the string cell value or get the numeric cell value. We can do that directly if we know what data is in there, but we don't always know that. So then we use a data formatter, which is an object of the class uh, data formatter. And then that will format the data exactly as it is displayed in the sheet in Excel. Of course, sometimes we want to do calculations with objects, so then we need to have the typed cell value. So we need to have the value that's in the worksheet in the correct type. So for that, we have here in this project created a small method called getTypedValue that will return the value in the correct type. Let's have a look at that. So there can be different types uh, that a cell has. First of all, we can have a formula. The last column in our sheet contained a formula. We can have a Boolean value, a numeric value, or a string value. And a numeric value can then also be either a date or a number. So if you look at cells that have a formula, then we, we're not going to output the formula. We want to output the result of the formula. So there's two ways that we can do that. You can get the cached result of the formula, or we can recalculate it. So in this case, we're going to get the value here. But we, we need to know the type. So we, we want to get the type of the calculated results of the formula. So what we can do is get the type from the cached formula result and store that as a cell type. So instead of the cell type being formula, we now have the cell type of the result. The last calculated value is in the cached result. Now, sometimes we want to recalculate it, or maybe it's never been calculated before, so we can calculate the formula in several ways. First, what we do is create a formula evaluator. There is a creation helper method in the workbook, and that gives us a form formula evaluator object. The evaluator object can be used to evaluate the formula for the cell, and it will put the result in the cached object. There's two other ways we can do this calculation. We can do evaluate in cell. We can call the evaluate in cell method on, from the evaluator object. And that will replace the formula with the result. So then you cannot, you can never recalculate again. The, the Excel sheet, if you save it, will have um, the calculated result. Or we can just do evaluate and that will return the value, but it will not update the cell value. What we're doing here is we evaluate the formula and then the cached result will be updated. And we can get the formula itself by just calling cell get cell formula. That gives us the formula that's in the cell. So now we have the cell type of the calculated result, or for the cells that have no formula, we just get uh, the cell type. If the cell type is Boolean, we return the Boolean value. If the cell type is numeric, then we have to check is a cell date formatted or is it not? If it's date formatted, we can use a date util class to check if a cell is date formatted. Then we return the date value. If it's not, then we return a numeric cell value. The last type we have is a string, so we can return the string cell value of a cell. So this method checks what the type of cell is and then returns an object of that type to our calling method and then puts, creates an object of type cell value here. So what we'll do, we just will convert that value to a string in all cases. An easy way to uh, convert something to a string is just concatenate it to a string, and then uh, that gets added to the output string. Just uh, for, for easier reading of the output, we format that string into a 20-character string, and then we uh, put a pipe symbol next to it to uh, make it uh, more readable. So loop through all the rows, loop through all the cells, get the output or the value of the cell, 
and print that out on the screen. If a row had no value, we'll print empty. So now let's take our output window, make it a little bit bigger and run our code here. So now first thing we did was display all the names of all the sheets. And that's what we see here. This section will print the sheet names. So we get two sheet names. Then we'll print one by one all the records that we found in the file. So first, first line, first row contains the headers. So that corresponds to this row here. And then each line by line, we will display the output here, always formatted to a 20 character string. You can see the calculated result of the formula is displayed here and not the formula itself. That's what our method here, get typed value would do. Then we had some empty cells and we uh, wanted these to be displayed as well, because if we wouldn't do that and we just loop through the cells, then this value would be displayed here because we're skipping, we would skip this empty cell and that would uh, mess up our data. So this way we know that was empty. So this is a very simple example of how you can read an Excel file using Java. I hope it was helpful. Thanks a lot.